Hello, hello, my lovelies. Good evening. Um, welcome to another live broadcast of Ginger Archie. Um, so what I do here is I record this stuff live. Uh, adjusting, adjusting. Um, so I record this live and I give you a really cool interview with uh, celebritarians and awesome people. And then uh, it goes up on my podcast. So very excited to have you all here. Oh, we have great and great engagement tonight. Um, I have a really cool guest this evening. It is Sir Mark Clare. He is um, the badass from Lions of Liberty. Uh, he is uh, an interesting fella, works in media, and hosts a really cool... Uh, oh, there's Mark Claire. Hi, Mark. You just got to hit that green button, baby. Um, but anyways, like I do at the beginning of the show, I want to um, just give a shout out to WeAreLibertarians.com. This is the network that I am on. I love them. Um, you can find my show, Ginger Archie, on there. Uh, and the big show, We Are Libertarians, which is amazing. And you should definitely uh, subscribe, join, listen. If you want to uh, be more informed on daily events and the news and what's happening through a libertarian perspective, you should definitely uh, do that. So... Go to wearelibertarians.com. You can find all the links you want to find. I am waiting for Sir Mark Clare to hit uh, join. Hi, Betsy. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Larry. Thank you guys so much. Um, this is going to be a super informal live with a podcaster, a libertarian podcaster, which is going to be really phenomenal. Um, he has a lot of experience in media and hosts one of the largest uh, libertarian podcasts around uh, Lions of Liberty, and I'm sure most of you have listened to them. Oh, hi, David. Hello. What are you doing this evening? Mark, you need to request join through your mobile device. Thank you, sir. Anyways, uh, we will field live questions. Um, aw, thanks, Betsy. She called me pretty, so she just like gets in the front of the line for that. Um, so I'm waiting for Mark to request join. Anyways, uh, this will go up on Ginger Archie, which is my podcast. And I'm fortunate enough to be on the We Are Libertarians podcast network. Um, and I have my show there, Ginger Archie. Uh, I've had a little lack in um, shows as of late because I had some technical issues. But back up and running, people. And I am ready. I am super ready uh, to post more shows and get you great interviews and more information and just spread anarchy throughout the world. So, okay, Mark Claire wants to be in my video. Well, I want you here, Mark. So, I'm waiting for you. We have a few bumps as always. Uh, there is Mark. Okay, I'm sideways now. That's all cool. We will fix this for the podcast. I'm going to go like this real quick. Okay, super fun. Might have some issues here. Okay. Hi, I'm sideways. Hello, people of the interwebs. Uh, going to hit that Mark Claire. And I'm going to add him. I'm approving. All right. Rotate my phone. I'm rotating. I am rotating. Hi, Mark. <laughs> now it worked. Yes. I've been trying to get on the whole time. Have you? I'm rotating as hell. <laughs> and you're upside down. To am I? What's happening? <laughs> okay. Am let's... I upside down or are you upside down? No, you look right side up. I'm going to be honest with you. You look sideways now. Do <laughs> I? Okay. Mark, can you yeah. turn your phone? Um, so we'll cut. We'll edit this stuff out because obviously we're live right now. But can you turn your phone uh, sideways? <laughs> yeah, oh, that's why I'm, fancy, I'm on, I'm sideways we? currently. And now, now you're upside down and this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I told you well, I'm super this is the other way. This is holding it not sideways. Okay. This is holding it sideways. Oh, look. Now okay. you look normal. 
Do I? I think. I mean, okay. as normal as you can get. I, well, I'm not particularly normal. Um, no. Nope. But Nobody uh, on or watching this live stream is normal, I would presume. I, uh, probably not. As I told you before, most of my audience are like strange anarchist neckbeards. So you're welcome. I got, I got mine coming in. Okay. But you can tell there is a line, so there's been a recent delineation of the neck and the beard. Let's see. Do a close-up on that. So as you can see, there was the, the, uh, the beginning of a neck beard. It was recently trimmed down. It is now on its way back in, but there's a line. Okay. So it, I've let it go a few days, but there's clearly a demarcation. I feel. So we have a lot of um, engagements already, which is exciting. And um, I'm seeing everything sideways, but I have a I have a guest of my own here too. Ah, uh, who's your doggo? This is my dog. His name is Hawk. There's another one over there. Hi, Hawk. He's gonna bark at me at some point because he'll get jealous of his attention. Um. So as I've said, that my show is uninformal and it's just fun. Uh. And That's why I'm on the porch. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> we do what we do. Um. Huskies are cute. Well, thank you. Um, so I'll randomly answer questions uh, about from people in the audience, and then we'll cut this and put it on the show, which is fun. Um, I feel like I'm looking at everything sideways, but I think that everybody else is seeing it straight, so I'm just not going to fuck with it. Oh, yeah, it looks correct to me. Okay. By the way, I'm marked explicit on iTunes, etc. Ooh. Yes. So I have to live up to that. Yeah. Ahead of time. So you got to drop some F-bombs, right. Mark. Um, fuck, fuck it. Why not? Yeah. Fuck yeah. We're going to do some anarchy up in here. Um, and so mm -hmm. I'm going to start off uh, introducing my guest this evening. This is Mark Clare. A lot of you may know him. Some of you may not. Um, Mark is a host, and I think you're like the editor-in-chief or some fancy title for Li Lions of I mean, yeah, there, there, there's nothing to really edit. At this point, we, we started off as a website back in 2012. We were basically like a, a Ron Paul propaganda website. So we all did articles and stuff like that then. So that was my title. And I guess I, we just haven't edited it. But I don't, I don't edit in chief a damn thing, to be honest with you. So, so Mark, um, obviously, uh, you host a podcast on Lions oh. of Liberty. Tell me, a, correct. tell me a little bit about yourself. A little bit about myself. Where does one even start? Well... Uh, sorry, I do this as as I get company with me. All good. We're not fancy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm a fan of Liberty, and I started a podcast because uh, I wanted to talk about that stuff a while ago. That's the short version. Just got a beer spilled, so I'm a little <laughs> getting multiply distracted here. Um, but uh, essentially, uh, the short version is uh, that uh, uh, back in college, uh, you know, I didn't really have my own ideas politically, but uh, I met this fellow who's now a contributor to our podcast. His name is Howie Snowden. And he, you know, we would drink late into the night, as people often do in college. Mm -hmm. And he would start talking to me about this congressman that he had met a few times, because uh, he was actually a, con con a congressional page when he was in high school. Not for Ron Paul, but for some other guy. Mm -hmm. Who even knows? And he used to, but all, he said he always used to go to this one guy's speeches. He would, he would never miss his speeches, because they were so awesome. He would go to his office sometimes and talk to him about uh, individual liberty and things like that. And I'm just thinking, like, why is this guy telling me about this old congressman? <laughs> I have no idea. But eventually he talked about it enough that I said, okay, I'll, I'll check this guy out. I'll see what he's writing about. And uh, the first thing that struck me, because I was raised in like pretty much a Republican type household, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't really have political beliefs of my own. But what struck me was that he was a Republican, but all of his articles, it was this column, he, I think he may still have it, called Texas Straight Talk. And almost every article was criticizing Republicans for some Republican position, you know, whether he was criticizing the war on drugs or criticizing uh, foreign policy or the police state. It was almost all directed, at least at the time, because this was during the Bush era, uh, at Republicans, and that just struck me as so unique that it made me think, all right, well, this guy is at least, like, being honest. He at mm -hmm. least is different than other people out there. He's not just going up and telling the party line. So that got me to listen to him, I think, just in the first place. And uh, you know, I kind of went down the rabbit hole of libertarianism a little bit then, but I wasn't super political. Um, in 2004, I did not vote for the Democrat or Republican. I was very anti-war, in part uh, thanks to Ron Paul. Uh, so I couldn't vote for either of them. I did vote for the Libertarian Party nominee, but I knew nothing about him. It was just a, a protest vote for really hardly any reason. I knew, knew nothing about the candidate, Michael Ben Eric. Mm -hmm. um, but it was only uh, when Ron Paul, uh, you know, ran in 2007 and went to those debates that I saw him on TV, and I was just like, oh my god! I was, I just, my mind was blown by the things he was saying. 
and the fact that he was so brave and bold in saying them, despite the fact that he was being laughed at, being mocked, um, and he just stood his ground and was consistent and always did it. Uh, I think what really stood out to me is he always did it with a sense of humor too. Hmm. And with this kind of de demeanor that was like, it, it blew your mind when you're like, how can you have such a great demeanor when people are up there making fun of you, mocking you, uh, acting like you're the things you say are just ridiculous. Like you're this, this crazy old man, but he just soldiered on. And uh, that really inspired me to just, because before uh, libertarian ideas, that was just sort of something in my head. It wasn't something I talked with literally anybody else about. Um, so that made me decide like, all right, well, I'm not going to be quiet. If this guy can go up there and, and take this, you know, verbal beating and uh, be essentially humiliated, what would be humiliating to anybody else and just keep going and going mm -hmm. and going, then surely I can talk about this stuff in my life. So that's kind of how the Lions of Liberty got started. Um, because I didn't shut up, I ended up kind of inspiring some other people down this path. Um, one of them, my friend Brian McWilliams, who lived mm -hmm. out here in Los Angeles with me. And then John Odermatt, who hosts Felony Friday. Brian hosts Electric Liberty Land. That's our kind of our pop culture show. And then John hosts Felony Friday now. Um, but back then, th these guys weren't libertarians either. I was just some crazy person posting Ron Paul videos on MySpace, of all places. This is how long ago that was. And uh, just ranting and raving about this congressman. But uh, eventually, I kind of, uh, hopefully, it became a little bit infectious. And they started becoming Ron Paul people. And it just sort of snowballed from there uh, until 2012 when we created Lions of Liberty. Uh, we met at Penn State. Uh, so that's where the lion comes from. And uh, at some point that morphed into a podcast because I just, I was a big, I was kind of a podcast fanatic. Um, I listened to podcasts no matter what I was doing, whether I was doing work or doing chores or walking my dogs. And uh, I just couldn't find enough libertarian podcasts, which might sound crazy at this point. But back then there, this is about six years ago, there weren't that many. Mm -hmm. uh, there was like a Lou Rockwell had one, uh, Robert Wenzel had one, but they were kind of sporadic. You couldn't f necessarily find them each and every week at the same time. And I wanted consistent content, um, interviews with libertarians. Uh, I really wanted to know like how people got into the ideas of liberty, why people thought the way they did. Uh, so I just said, all right, I'm going to take this website and just start this podcast. And that's kind of what I did. I really had no idea what I'm doing, uh, what I was what I was doing. Maybe that's a 40 and slip. Someone say I don't have any idea what I'm doing now. Uh, but like Ron Paul, I soldier on uh, through moments of humiliation, moments of frustration and all those things to, uh, to keep this thing going. So it's been almost it's been actually over six years now that, uh, that we've been doing the podcast. And of course, uh, as most people know, since then, Brian and John have started their own podcast. So we're now we're we're really a three a three show show within the one show mm -hmm. uh, if that makes sense so uh, we have a uh, kind of, we all have different takes on things i mean we share uh, the overall passion for the ideas but we all look at things a little bit differently and have different attitudes different styles uh, that sort of thing so uh, we hope that there's something kind of for everybody in, in our sort of our three show format no i think you guys were um original to the idea of having a uh, uh network and having different shows on it which is what we are libertarians which is the network i'm on we like to make uh, that claim yeah, yeah. <laughs> um obviously well we had a question from a nicole who said what is uh -oh. this nonsensical waste of time hey nicole wow. fuck off how wow, harsh don't follow harsh. me um, yeah, you're the one watching it i don't know you i know tell, you tell us like who's Why wasting their time yeah. yeah uh um and i i think we talked a little bit about social media which is my uh I guess my foothold. Um, so you guys have a very successful libertarian podcast and obviously you host the main show and have perpetuated this. I would like to know um, through your years of doing this and you've obviously risen to the top because I don't think a lot of people know that most libertarian podcasts don't even make it past seven episodes or like 20 downloads. Or most podcasts <laughs> period. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, I think back, like, uh, interviewing a podcaster, what was, like, a pivotal moment for you? What was a time where you thought, oh, my God, I'm doing something good, people are listening, and I need to continue doing this? Uh, well, I have been asked this, a version of this question a couple times recently, so I guess I'd be disingenuous if I gave a different answer. Okay. Uh, but to do me, whatever you want. Uh, I'm Mark <laughs> Explicit, Mark. You do what the well, fuck you want. <laughs> it's the true answer, though, I would say. Um, was when uh, I had Tom Woods on the show. Uh, I think it was like episode 68, and I was doing it, I think, weekly at that point. So maybe I was a year and a half or so-ish in. And uh, you know, I, I think there's a point where you still feel like you you don't really belong, like you're just kind of faking it. Like you're, you're not a podcaster. You're just some guy playing a podcaster on, on podcasts, mm -hmm. you know, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when I had Tom on and I, and I interviewed him and it went great, then he – uh, was nice enough to air that interview as an episode of his show, which mm -hmm. already on its own was awesome. But when I was listening to it at the end of the show, he had something that he said, but it really struck me. He said, you know, it's just amazing to go on a show where 
Uh, you know, you're not getting just a, a series of, que of questions that were pre-planned one after another. Uh, it's actually like having a real conversation with a real person, which is exactly the kind of thing I was striving to. And if Tom Woods, who did this five days a week and had what I thought was the best libertarian podcast that could ever exist, uh, would say that about me, then I must be doing something okay. So I, that, that's really the moment that stands the fuck out to me. I gotta yeah. try to remember to curse more. And I, you should. And I, obviously, um, you know, the most important podcast you're going to be recording tonight is Ginger Archie. For sure. You're not doing anything more important after that, right? No, nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. So, but <clears throat> yeah, I know. I might be going on a show that rhymes with uh, Nam, Nam Shoulds. I don't know. Yes. Stay tuned. <laughs> so, Mark, I like to break up my show with a little game. Um, uh -oh. <clears throat> and then we'll get into some stuff that's not super serious because this is going to be a nice. Hopefully, we can get some more riveting questions right. from the likes of Nicole. <laughs> uh, she already responded, but I, I have no time for her. I, I don't. I don't uh, suffer thoughts, so I just say what I want to say. <laughs> drop, drop me a PM, Nicole. We'll chat. <laughs> yeah, you should totally do that, Nicole. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna break this up, and then we'll go into a little bit more of a philosophical, serious topic. Um, I'm going to play Pick Your Poison, Mark. Do you know what this is? Um, not exactly. Okay. I feel like I've seen you do it before. Yeah. Uh, so it's like... I have, to choose, what, I have to choose between two questions to answer? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. My yeah, favorite yeah. person to ever do this was Eric July. He, no, that's the one I saw. That's the one I'm thinking He my of. ass up. Um, okay. So I'm just picking these random cards, and you have to pick and then explain why. So Mark Claire. Would you rather get stuck in an elevator that's one person over capacity for two hours or have eyes that only work at night? Whoa. And that, that's for the rest of my life? Apparently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I need to know the time periods because the first one was very specific. Yes. I, I would say that's in perpetuity with the eyeballs. That's really not fair. <laughs> that's the point. Um, oh, man. I mean, as soon as I heard the first one, I was almost definitely going to not pick that because I'm kind of claustrophobic and tight spaces and people smells and I don't like any of that stuff. Um, I feel like I could go <laughs> a day, a week, even a year with eyes that only... Oh, we're experiencing technical, technical difficulties, but that is fine. Waiting for Mark Claire to come back around. So I'm doing some filler. Hello. I would find a way to talk. We're good. No, I, I didn't know We're I good. left. <laughs> okay. Anyway. You did. I think I would tough it out for two hours in that, in that elevator. As long as I knew it was only going to be two hours. And I knew that my consequence was being blind during the day for the rest of my life. If I was older, if I was like 80, this would be no question. I'd be like, okay, I'll, I'll finish this thing out only being able to see it at night. But uh, I still got more. T I think I have more time than that. Anyway, so I'm, I'm gonna tough it out in the elevator. But that was not an easy choice. Lay Mark. Okay. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Yes. Okay. I'm hammered. Today. So now, and now I'm getting into. Uh, are you getting hammered like with alcohol? Um. Well, eventually I will be. I only, I only had a half a beer and the other half spilled, and my dog is drinking the other half. Fantastic. Now. Okay. Don't tell the ASPCA. Okay. So we're gonna go into some hard questions now. Um, I don't know if you saw the little uh, infighting that happened with the Libertarian Party this week. Uh, no idea what you're talking about. With Nicholas Sarwark, who I did do an interview with um, about a month and a half ago. Um, I've done several. Yes, I know you have. I've actually deleted a lot of it because I didn't really like it. <laughs> so I can do that. Um, because of you, Nick, or quality? Uh... <laughs> I, you, I, you I don't felt have to like answer I was, that. I guess it's your No, shit. no. I felt like I was trying to be too nice. And in essence, oh. I didn't produce something that I would have wanted to produce. But anyways. Okay. So you saw his post about Bill Weld. Obviously, I'm part of the uh, Libertarian Party Mises Caucus. I'll see you all in Austin. I'm a delegate. And I will represent Austrian economics. Big shout out to Michael Heiss. Um, anyways... What What is your take on this whole uh, Libertarian Party infighting stuff? Like, uh, what do you think is beneficial or not beneficial to the party? Well, 
beneficial because it gives us podcast content and podcasters always need fun podcast content. Dave got a podcast out of it. Reason got a podcast out of it. So that's all wonderful stuff. Mm-hmm. The fact is most people outside, not most people, 100% of people outside of our bubble don't even know who these people are. I mean, obviously, a lot of people know who Dave is from the comedy world and that sort of thing, but they don't care about this debate. Uh, this is just for us. This is for us liberty nerds and nobody else. And I think it's, it's important to hash this stuff out uh, in some format. So it may as well be in the form of a, of a somewhat entertaining debate. Mm-hmm. I think the problem is with, with that specific topic, Dave and Nick, based on the roles that they are in currently and have chosen the path that they've chosen to pursue their own, you know, ideas about what li- liberty should be or how it should come about, they've chosen completely different paths. And of course, they're going to have completely different perspectives on approaches because they're they're literally answering different questions, mm-hmm. you know, uh, in, in a sense. Nick is answering, how can we build a, bi- a third political party that represents the ideas of liberty and gets elected and puts people in office and grows its numbers? So that's one metric. Um, that's the path that he's chosen to be on. And I can't say his perspective, considering that path, is completely insane. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I, I mean, I do side with Dave on this overall, just in, in the idea of what um, sort of what uh, what I feel a Libertarian Party should be, what a Libertarian Party presidential candidate should be. Mm-hmm. I share much more Dave's vision, but I understand that Nick is probably going to look at it in a different way, and that's because Dave is here to inspire. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope Nick is here to inspire, too. I hope we're all here to inspire in some way, because, you know, the What's the point of growing a political party into this huge thing if it's not if it's just becoming a third one that's like the others? I'm not saying it is, but if that if that was the only metric was was growth, well then I, I find the whole venture kind of pointless. If if, we're, if it's only for growth, but if it's growth and is actually representing the ideas, then I think growth is a good thing. So it all depends on what the growth is, and I think that is sort of Dave's point too. He's like, yes, of course we'd want to grow a party if it's actually representing the ideas of liberty. Um, I don't know if there's a uh, I don't know if I'm just waffling the line here or what. Uh, I agree with Dave on the on the context of the debate. I would mm-hmm. rather see a much stronger, much more Ron Paul esque, Harry Brown esque mm-hmm. type candidate than say a Bob Barr or uh, who is really on the right, or even a Gary Johnson who you know, I like Gary Johnson. Maggie like many aspects of Gary Johnson. Mm-hmm. He's he's aiming at the middle, and I just I think strategically, just from the perspective of where libertarians are, aiming at the middle is just kind of a pointless endeavor. Yeah, you might grow, you might you might get more votes, you might get more ballot access. And that might help many actual better libertarian candidates across the country. So mm-hmm. I'm not like upset. I'm not upset when that happens. Um, but the other day, I'm in the inspiration business. That's why I do this podcast. It's to get more people interested and inspired in things. So I that's the, that's the perspective I'm going to take on it. So I do, I do want to see that sort of same thing in a presidential candidate because I'm here because of a presidential candidate who wasn't even in the Libertarian Party at the time. But if, if that person can be coming from the party with that word on it. Well, fantastic. The fact is, though, that we all know the system is so entirely rigged. Uh, the Democrat and Republican parties are, are essentially wings of the government at this point. They're indistinguishable from, indistinguishable from the government. So it's kind of silly to even think we can compete on the same playing field because uh, we can't. The laws are completely different. We literally can't. The media is, is, is not going to put libertarians on for the most part unless they think they can play spoiler, which is why Bill Weld got some time and Gary Johnson got some time uh, last go around. Uh, so I think we have to play a completely different game because we are playing a completely different game, whether we like it or not. We should be playing the inspiration game and creating as much as many people who are enthusiastic about the ideas and recognize the complete um, corruption and, and irrelevance or what should be irrelevance of the two party system. So um, that, I guess that's the side of things I would land on. But I guess I'm just giving the caveat that I kind of get how Nick's perspective almost has to be different based on the role that he that, you know, is in. Uh- I, I think that's a pragmatic view. Um, there was a question I asked Nick when I interviewed him, and um, I think it's an important question. So uh, I would agree with the fact that I, I understand his position, and his uh, job in the Libertarian Party is to gain membership. He's a, a working for a political party. Um, but I asked him if it came down to it, would you rather uh, promote the idea of liberty and spread it to people? Are you in a fucking airport, Mark? I live a mile from the airport, so yes. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's gay as hell. Anyways, um, I'm just saying that. It's the only way I can afford to live here. Okay. By living by the airport. <laughs> um, I, I asked him, would you rather uh, uh, 10,000 people come over to the idea of liberty and believe it, or would you rather 10,000 people sign up for the Libertarian Party? And he said... He basically, he would rather have more people sign up. That troubled me, but I understand that's his position. My answer would be, 
can't, why not both? I'd like 10,000 people to sign up yeah. that are all newly inspired yeah. libertarians. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get down into the weeds now, Mark, because I do what I want because it's my show, and I'm informal, and I'm kind of annoying, to be honest. Hey, I, uh, I'm on a porch by the airport, so okay. talk about informal. Yay. Um, so I am an anarchist and I'm the, uh, representative on the, we are libertarians, uh, podcast network of anarchy. Uh, how would you describe your political philosophy? Do you more identify as a minarchist or as an anarchist? Oh, well, if those are my choices, I'm absolutely choosing anarchist. I actually found myself describing myself as an an anarchist recently because I was trying to describe anarcho-capitalism to some people, but I didn't. The word that I was more afraid of using was capitalism more than anarchist, which I, I didn't even realize that would be the case until I mm-hmm. found myself describing it. I really have no problem calling myself an anarchist. I think the, the biggest problem with the term is just how people that aren't us, which is like everybody, mm-hmm. what they think of it is before we bring it up. So if I'm talking to you guys, sure, I'll tell you I'm an anarchist. I, don't believe, I believe all our systems should be voluntary. Uh, I believe our entire world would be completely different if that were the case. And that's the world that I want to see. Uh, so I'm certainly an anarchist from that extent. I, I don't know if I'm going to start with, with grandma, with, hey, grandma, try anarchy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I might just try to explain things in a different way. It's all about knowing your audience and, and trying to realize what they're already injected with. And that doesn't mean um, you don't tell the truth. I always tell the truth about what I believe. I might just start at a different point with different people or, or just start asking certain hey. questions with people um, you know, to kind of just see what they already think. And I know what kind of topics I can bring up with them first. But I'm always going to get to the same place because I'm never going to hide my views. That's what Ron Paul taught me. Don't hide your views. Uh, the only way to inspire people is to just clearly and boldly continue to say them out loud as much as possible mm-hmm. and to never back down from them unless you truly rethink something, which everybody does at some point. You know, we all have little tweaks to our thoughts here and there. But uh, now for the most part, I'm all about being big and bold in this one. So, yeah, anarchy it is. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I think that as well. In fact, being an anarchist, uh, I tend to get a lot of flack from um, other anarchists because I'm involved with the LP and, but I just don't really care anymore. Um, so I think that, uh, there's a difference between principle and pragmatism. And, uh, I could be principled all day long and I could shout to no one and no one would listen. Or I could maybe talk to people that aren't completely awakened to the idea of anarchy and make a real difference. And I think there's, there's something to be said about that. I think that's where the movement gets fractured. And there's so few of us um, being uh, on, you know, uh, the editor-in-chief of Lions of Liberty. Do you deal with a lot of uh, anarchists that uh, call you not a purist? Or, like, do you get blowback from that? Uh, not too much. Really the only place weird things happen are YouTube comments, I'd say at this point, or occasional Twitter comment. But it's really, it's never, the comments are, from that perspective, usually haven't listened to the thing that they're answering, because I'll I'll post provocative titles and and that sort of thing. I'll ask a question in the title. It doesn't mean it's not leading you to any conclusion. It's just trying to make it, have an interesting headline that hopefully people will click and listen to. Um, Like, um, we did a a show with this guy, um, his name's Theodore from Crowdfunded Government, his idea that all government programs should be voluntarily crowdfunded. So, uh, yeah, and technically that's not anarchism, so sorry, Uh, but I'm willing to listen to anybody that... Wait, wait, how is that not? Well, actually, that was my question to him as well, because I think, I think ultimately, and this this is where, okay, so let's go back. You're actually right. It is. And, but the problem is that he's calling it government. So people get triggered and go, but it said government on it. So why are you calling it government? Blah. So that's why it's like, I, we have to try to let go of some of these terms sometime and just try to explain mm-hmm. to people what you actually mean and not get ourselves so darn triggered over our terms and the way we hold on to them so dearly. Mm-hmm. So if you have to hate the word government, maybe just take a deep breath, breathe in, breathe out and say, okay, I don't like that word, but I'm still gonna listen to what this person's saying because mm-hmm. you might actually find that they align exactly with their principles. So I actually think, it, I mean, anything that is voluntarily funded um, is an example of anarchy, it's, unless that yeah. voluntarily funded organization is then going and violating others' rights, well, that would be a violation of rights or you might even call that a government then if mm-hmm. it starts doing things like that. Um, but the point is, it's, it's not about these terms because you know, people have, it's their own definitions for every word that there is in their mind and these preloaded definitions. So you really have to get to a point where you can just have conversations with people. And we also have to be open-minded and listen to what people mean when they say their words. Uh, I know a lot of socialists that when you talk about them, about your ideas, you can break them down and they're 
they agree with a lot of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. they, they just, they see government as voluntary. They don't even, in there, they don't make the connection that it's just not. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have to lead them down that path in a certain way. And, and you know, hopefully a lot of people just won't see that. And they'll always just keep saying, well, whatever, I think government's the way to do it. And you know, maybe, you, maybe you give up on them. Um, what was the original question? I don't know. Yeah. But I, I, I was ranting. I don't know, but I have I another one. No, I rant. Okay. Trust me, I'm a, a ginger that rants. And I rant. I rant so far away that Chris oh. has to edit it. Um, anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, oh, that makes me happy. That makes me want to cause um, even more audio issues. Yeah, good. You should. <laughs> Knowing <laughs> Chris is, will have to deal with all this. That's fine. Um, so thinking about that, well, we're first going to go, we're going to go to another pick your poison. And then I have another awesome question for you, Mark. But first you have to uh, choose between these two horrible concepts. <laughs> all right. Let's do it. Pick your poison, Mark Claire. Would you rather believe absolutely everything you're told or have the theft alarm go off every time you leave a store even though you didn't steal anything? <laughs> Fun. Uh, it would be annoying, but uh, I would still take the theft alarm. I would alarm, too. I think. Yeah, that was easy. I, every time I just have to explain, look, I went on this podcast. I had to pick my poison. I chose this. It's going to happen every time, guys. I'll try to keep going to the same store so they all know. So it's just like, oh, it's that guy again. You know, hopefully you know, it's not that bad. But, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to live a life where I just believed everything I'm, I'm told. That would, that would not be fun at all. So I'm going to ask you a question. Um, obviously, you have a very successful podcast. I think you guys are in the top five. Of all. Huge. That's why I live in this mansion by the airport. That's right. <laughs> this is why uh, my rig is down and I don't have $1,600 to fix it. And we're on mobile. <laughs> Come on, cheapo. Yeah. Send for some money. Yes. And then send me money yes. when you're done. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm going to hit that Hit that in the show notes. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, libertarian podcasting is not uh, yeah. financially beneficial. <laughs> but... Uh, so uh, thinking about where you've come in podcasting and you guys have had some success. Uh, you are one of the largest libertarian podcast networks out there. Um, what would you say, where are the turning points? Like, is there some points where you were doing this? And obviously uh, you have your Patreon and uh, you're trying to fund what you're doing. Where was the turning point where you said, this is what I need to do uh, as a side job for a living. Like, can you explain the moment that you understood where you needed to send this message to people and how did that work out? Yeah, I think when it really, really hit home, I mean, I, I've known I was passionate enough to keep doing this podcast for a long time. Um, but I, I think last year, last year? Yeah, yeah, it was last year at the Libertarian National Convention, and it was right coming off after our first trip to Porkfest, too. And we, we went to both of those places on both of those trips, funded entirely by our listeners. Uh, and we were able to make some great content there. Um, at, at the LNC, I was able to start doing some video interviews. Pretty low quality. We were just like, you know, just we hadn't even thought about it until there. We're like, wait, why don't we just live stream this? So we set up just an a iPhone, streamed it, and but just really doing interviews in person and meeting so many people in person that said, oh, you know, I love your show, um, you know, I love this interview, that's, that interview. I, I walked into a circle where people were joking about something, and it was like, and I was like, oh, I was just telling a story about your interview with uh, the one time you interviewed uh, Walter Block. And it's just like, what? I'm running, I'm walking into people that were telling a story about a podcast I host. I guess when it really clicked, like, oh, my God, these are, because you can see download numbers, and you can see that things mm -hmm. are going in the right direction all you want, but it doesn't really hit you as much until you meet these people in person and realize that there's, there's humans mm -hmm. all over the place. And those humans are getting inspired, and those humans are telling stories about interviews you did mm -hmm. with Walter Block. So it's just, uh, that really inspired me. I mean, just meeting all many of the people that um, I have interviewed, on, you know, on Skype or what have you, uh, meeting them in person um, at the LNC and just meeting so many uh, passionate activists there as well. Just make, it makes you realize that you're a part of a real, a real community that is awesome and vibrant. And, uh, you know, really that, that was really inspiring that we're actually doing work that is reaching actual people, not just little pixels on, you know, that on our a page that shows us our stats. I think that's awesome. And uh, being like a fairly new podcaster and, and pursuing something and, I've been fortunate enough to join a successful network, um, but I've made a lot of really good friends and 
Um, I understand that we have a small audience and we want to grow it out to a larger audience. And I think you guys are definitely doing that. And I'm really happy you're out there. Um, two things. Are you ready, Mark Claire? I suppose. I'm going to ask another drink. I'm going to ask you another question, but first, um, what are you drinking? Are you not drinking? <laughs> Please tell uh, me you're not get, drinking a White Claw. I'm going to get... No, I'm not drinking a White Claw. I'm probably going to get a nice beard flack. I, I am drinking... It's a Golden Road. Uh, it's a, they're these cart beers, and they're all different. One's a melon cart. This one's a pineapple cart. Shut up, losers. They're delicious. I don't really care. Yeah. Beer, fuck them, good. Mark. Don't, don't and, let and them not, rule you. It's not you. a White Claw. And you know what? When I go inside, uh, I might do a shot of Fireball. I don't know. I don't care. I'll be a 22-year-old girl if I want to be. You do you. <laughs> you do you, I was babe. probably joking about the last part. But maybe not. Okay. Mark, you heard it here on Ginger Arky. Mark Claire drinks Fireball on the regular. Sometimes. Um, yeah. So uh, talking about things, um, number one, I want you to plug, and I'll, I'll put it in the show notes when this goes up on Ginger Arky. You guys did a, like a documentary, which is kind of really cool. So tell me about that. Yes. So um, this year we went back to Porkfest for the second time. And uh, we wanted to do something more than last time. You know, we wanted to do, I really wanted to do some video content. So that was a bark. You might hear a few more of those because my uh, dog gets really good. jealous I'm on the phone. I am fancy, Mark. <laughs> All right. So uh, we wanted to do some, like, video content there. And we got to talking with a good friend of our show. His name is Dan Smots. He hosts a podcast called The System Is Down. And he also uh, owns his own production company. He does awesome videography. Um, you know, so um, we kind of made a deal with him to bring him to Porkfest with us and he would shoot some footage and, you know, he would uh, create a little mini documentary for us. So that's exactly what we did. I, I was also able to do a lot of in-person interviews there, which is awesome. Uh, I got to interview David Freeman, Matt Kibbe, um, all sorts of people in person there. Uh, did an interview with Nick at Porkfest too. Um, yeah. And it's just another place where it's just fun to meet people and, uh, again, realize that these are real people out there. Side note, uh, real, that's sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Nick is a personal friend of mine, local to me, and he's just – him and his wife are amazing. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick's the man. So. I'm being barked at. Um, okay. ugh. Anyway, I'm going to walk while I talk. <laughs> Uh, where was it? Yes. So uh, Dan met, went and shot a bunch of footage of us at Porkfest. And um, basically he put all this footage together and sort of like throughout the trip, he interviewed me on the drive there. He drove with us from the airport. Just not a formal interview, just kind of talked to me while he was filming me about how we came together as the Lions of Liberty, why we started the podcast, how we were inspired by Ron Paul. And then he also did the same thing with John on the way back from Porkfest. Um, so we kind of spliced these narratives together. He also had Brian uh, record his own narrative separately in a humorous fashion that I won't give away just yet. You have to go watch the documentary. Uh, when I say documentary, it's, it's 15 minutes long. So, you know, we're not, we're not making a feature-length film here about the Lions of Liberty. We want something really easily consumable. So it's just 15 minutes out of your day. And basically it's, it's telling the story from our perspective of how mm -hmm. we came together, why we do what we do, uh, why, how, how we hope to inspire other people. And kind of interspersed with footage of us at Porkfest, uh, just having a good time, meeting people, a lot of cameos from other libertarians, you see some Jeffrey Tucker, you see some Matt Kibbe, uh, all sorts of familiar names will be popping up. And uh, it really just shows you, it's really meant to show you guys more of who we are and show everybody that, you know, we're just real people like you. We're, we're drinking, we're partying, we're having a good time, and we're spreading the ideas of liberty while we do it. So we hope to inspire people uh, to do the same thing, no matter what you already like doing in life. Uh, there's always a way to sort of uh, apply it. Uh, to the ideas of liberty or find an interesting angle, just like like uh, Nick Bacone did with Sounds Like Liberty. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always an angle you can take with an interest that you already have. Mm -hmm. uh, not everybody needs to do that, and it's not everybody's role. But if it is, there's no reason not to be, because we're just regular people too. We weren't podcasters, we weren't professional radio people, anything like that. We just kind of dove into it, figured, out, figured it out as we went along, and here we are. So we hope to... Uh, get more people sort of inspired just by seeing the, the work that the work that piece of work and oh. see how far we've come in six years and um everybody can find that before i forget we have a very specific url that we set up to make it real easy the documentary is called and live free uh mm -hmm. that's based on the sign off that i do for the show live long and live free and uh you can find that at lionsofliberty.com slash live free really really simple yes. 15 minutes of your day and it's free can't, they got nothing to lose. So drop all your creds. Obviously, they'll be in the show notes at uh, we are libertarians dot com and Jinjarki. But drop all your links right now, Mark Claire. Okay. Well, that was one. Lionsofliberty dot com slash live free. Uh, you can find all our podcasts over at lionsofliberty dot com. 
Uh, let's see, what else? Patreon. If you want to support us on Patreon, we don't just ask you for money. We bombard our Patreon supporters with extra content, with discounts on merchandise. Uh, you, get, you, you usually get free stuff almost at every level you, you, uh, you join. Uh, anybody that joins at $10 or higher a month gets this new product we have. It's called, it's a coffee mug with our phrase that we're trying to get going, taxation is death. I love taxation is theft. It's true. It's accurate. But I don't think it's strong enough because taxation destroys Taxation destroys yes. civilizations. Taxation kills. Taxation is death. So you can get a Taxation is Death mug by uh, joining our Patreon, $10 or higher. And uh, there's all sorts of perks as you go up and up and up. We have monthly conference calls uh, for our 25 and, uh, and, and 25 up a month patrons. And uh, there's just more and more. The higher you go, the more the fun gets. So uh, that's patreon.com slash lines of liberty if you want to uh, kick us some support you can you can join for as little as two bucks a month that, that just gets you access to our secret facebook group uh but even with that you get a lot more insider access to us uh you get access to live streams we do of a lot of the shows you were on one of those with us mm -hmm. uh the drunken democratic debate recap that we did that so uh, we're always trying new things trying to see what works and uh just trying to re really build a community because that, that's the thing about a podcast you know you're you're building essentially a small community mm -hmm. within this greater libertarian community and uh finding more ways to continue to continue to see that community grow is really you know that's that's our, our goal right now. That's awesome. And uh, I would encourage everybody listening to Ginger Archie right now or just on my Facebook Live to follow Lions of Liberty. They give you really good content. And uh, it's free. Or if it's not free, you'll get better stuff. So please follow. Yes. Um, follow the show notes at Ginger Archie because you will uh, be able to follow them and, and link to all the good stuff. Um, Mark? I told you my show is silly and funny, and uh -oh. um, I know you have something fancy coming up this evening. Something a little fancy. A little bit. Not as fancy as my show, for sure. I'm going to ask you no. one last question, then. Nothing's as fancy as drinking on the porch and right. podcasting. <laughs> I very much enjoyed it. Um, actually, I would say, like, starting podcasting, I've uh, really enjoyed my relationship with other podcasters. Uh, uh, and so, uh, I love Lions of Liberty. Um, awesome. Yeah. You guys are great. And uh, I would highly recommend anybody listening to Wheel Arbitrarians Network or Ginger Archie to subscribe to uh, Lions of Liberty. You're going to get good content, up-to-date information, regular shows, which is not something that a lot of libertarians do. So, uh, <laughs> regular shows are super important. Um we don't miss anything. We guarantee to yeah. show up three days a week. It's going to yeah. happen every time. But now uh, I'm thinking in closing, Mark, before you go on to your fancy show, um, I'm going to ask you a uh, pick your poison question. Okay. All right. Let's do it. All right. Mark Claire, would you rather constantly hear the theme music from It's a Small World in your head or reveal your first impression of every one the moment you see them a second in time <laughs> okay so you can relive the small world or you can be honest about people when you meet it's them in my head 24 7 a day Is that what yep yeah what i'm just gonna, gonna tell do? people what i think of them i'm just gonna tell people what i think of them immediately i'm not that far from that already i, I might wait you. a little bit so I, it's not really that big of an adjustment. I might not blurt it out so bluntly as I might be forced to in this, in this um, situation, but nah, it's, not, it's not far enough from reality that I, I even have to think about it. Wonderful. Well, I would say um, it's been a super informal show of Ginger Archie. Absolutely. But I've enjoyed it. I learned it. a lot about myself. Yeah, that's good. Um, <laughs> that's fun. That's what I do. I am not out there to solve all the world's problems. If you want me to, message me and I'll fucking put you in your place. But <laughs> regardless of that, it's been wonderful. I know you have another interview coming up, which is not half as fancy as mine. No, nah, um, it's no but, bigs. Uh, I'm saying uh, link to the show notes. We'll have uh, Lions of Liberty in there. But uh, follow Mark on social media. Uh, you can do that. Yes, you should definitely do that. And... I will close this show out. Oh, my gosh. I have fancy things going on. Uh, the same way I do all of my shows. Um, and I say this to you. P.
peace and grace to you, my lovelies, and fuck the state. Peace, peace, fuck the state, peace, peace.